something you can't fix. If you can't fix what's broken, you'll, uh, you'll go instead. It's Jay and Adam. It's Previewed. It's Previewed's Fix It with Adam and Jay. Hey, peaches! Welcome to Fix It. We're friends. Don't let friends fix pop culture alone. I'm Adam. And I'm Jay. And you're our listeners. Hey there, listeners. Ho oh, there, listeners. Um, air, air bending. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you can read the code on the wind. To determine Adam's mysterious message he's sending you. Yes, indeed. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, what kind of what kind of does what kind of bending would happen in Vlasteria? Do you think? Hmm. There'd be bit bending. There'd be yeah, curly bit bending. There'd be uh, bird bending for all the uh, macaws. For the macaws, yeah. Yeah. There'd be fundraise bending for the from the, the boosters. boosters. Yeah. Uh. And then uh, with the, the producers, um, oh, that's audi- audi- that's like edit, editing, bending. Edit, bending, edit bending, edit bending, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything changed when the Bird Nation attacked. <laughs> 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 Welcome to our show, Fix It. I'm Jay. That's Adam. Uh, you may know us from the wildly popular YouTube channel previewed. We're getting there. That we're on right now. I uh, look. It's all you gotta. I'll keep it all in perspective. You know. Yeah, the perspective is. We're getting there. Yeah, we're we're we are blue collar content creators, but and boy howdy, aren't we? Uh, this is our show, Fix It, where every week Adam and I take a piece of pop culture that maybe missed the mark, maybe didn't quite get there, maybe just couldn't get its forms right to bend properly, and we fix it. And this week we are going to be fixing 2010's absolute complete bomb of a film, Avatar. No. No. Avatar is not in the title. It's just The Last Airbender. That's really all it's called? Yes. The Last Airbender? It's just The Last Airbender. No. I know. I know. I would sh- I watched it last night, and I was like, wait, it's just... Because the title comes up, it's like, The Last Airbender. We're fi- I was like, where's... Oh. Oh. I really thought for a second that you were pulling a fast one, and we were just going to do something else. Nope. Because we've been doing a lot... Of of Avatar stuff from all we've different been, directions we've, 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 on the we've, channel. Yeah, it's been a it's been a lot of Avatar all the time, and I know a lot of people are like, "You guys do a lot of Avatar." It's like they're sponsored. Leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to ride away, baby. Okay, okay, we're trying to we're trying to do something over here. Pull okay, it in, push it out. Pull, pull it in, push it out. <laughs> trying to ride that wave. Navspopcorn.com <laughs> slash shop. Navatar, ten percent off. Get get yourself some delicious popcorn. Uh, that one's free. Brian. Look, <laughs> we had we, we had stuff in the works. People were like, but other stuff. I'm like, guys, we have to choose at some point. We can't just snap our fingers and give you another reaction to another kind of show. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. We are just two guys. Anyways, we are fixing 2010's The Last Airbender. <laughs> Because Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender series has come out. We've started reacting to it. And we're having a really nice time. We are three episodes in by the time we're recording this. And so far, I am loving it. It's doing a great job. It's doing a great job. And after watching this movie for the first time today, I realize... and This was the first time you saw it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is the first I time I saw it, too. I had a newfound respect for this new series uh-huh. and i was and all the people yes. that are complaining about it i was like are you serious right now they salted the earth of this franchise you need you need to you you sh- you're lucky you're getting this <laughs> like, like seriously like seriously uh, <laughs> everything makes way more sense now after watching this movie of like why it just why avatar just kind of went away for a while and then everyone was excited yeah. when cora popped up like we're getting more Wow, we almost yes. Yeah, I watched this, this for the first time franchise. today, and we'll get into it l- later on in the show, as is our want. Uh, but I, th- it may it may be from a movie making perspective, from just a shot comp, just a directorial like outing. This is maybe the worst movie we've watched for this show. It's bad. It's there are some. Sh- Here's the thing, like when D, like we watched the D and D movie, there was some bad stuff. 
But considering what their oh bu- yes 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 mm-hmm. considering what their budget was and considering like what they were trying to do, mm-hmm. it made I understood why certain things happened the way that they did. Oh sure sure. Yeah. But that movie at least knew how to set up how to frame a shot. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it did. It didn't randomly have Sokka's back in there for absolutely no reason. Anyways, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But before we get into fixing The Last Airbender, so just, uh, we've... Just rev it up, but I can... I can, I can, I can, I can. <laughs> look, look, we are very positive content creators. We try to put out a very hopeful and positive vibe with the content that we make. Yes. But, however, but... We, ha- we have picked a podcast premise that is... A little inherently negative, that's so a little, I that's... get a little worked up. But then I, a lot of it is me worked up, me getting ramped up. Is that I have to like fight myself from being too negative. <laughs> I'm like, tone it back, day, tone it back. Well, tone it back. We're, are... we're having fun. We've done. We're having fun. About eighty episodes of this, and there's been only 80? been a couple of movies been... where we're just like, it's been eighty, and I, I think we've only, I think we've only posted like like reposted an episode like three times. Twice. Oh, we did it over this Christmas. Yeah, over Christmas. It was the only time yeah. we repeated an episode. It's the only time. Mm-hmm. That's buck wild to yeah, me. We've done a good, good job. But before we get into the last Airbender, uh, we uh, it's come to my absolutely favorite and the audience's absolutely most favorite. We took a poll um, uh, segment of the show where Adam and I deepen our fellowship, uh, which means to uh, em- embrace your friendship. For it those means friendship. Who, yeah. Yeah, it means friendship. But also, I don't have to. I don't have to explain myself to you. <laughs> It's good enough for Frodo and the gang. Yeah, man. Anyways. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not anyone's problem because we ain't talking about it because we ain't got time for it. Anyways, we come to Roll for Convo where Adam and I have 20 topics of conversation uh, that uh, we, we don't know what we're going to talk about in this segment. And I'm no going to roll idea. a 20-sided die and we're going to pick from the list that is provided by our producer, Brian, who's a wonderful producer, but also knows he's, what he did. He's also, yeah, but dude, he's part of the Fire Nation, man. He's part of the Fire Nation. He's right there. Look at that. He's, yeah, can't, man. Can't trust that guy. He'll be redeemed, though, may- right? May- maybe. Anyways. Maybe. He does love masks. All right. <laughs> he does. I rolled a gentleman's nine. A gentleman's nine. Okay. What are your feelings on writing utensils N- now versus when you were in school? Pencils, pens, markers, sharpies, expo markers, colored pencils, size of utensils. Do you prefer to type? Go off, kings. That is, I, I think, that is, and I feel like that this is a targeted question specifically aimed at you. Yeah, I am extraordinarily uh, particular about my writing instruments. I yes, specifically um, now with the go off kings. Uh, it, uh, I I am. Uh, what do, what do I have before? on me right now? I I always always it is a very rare occurrence, and I almost feel embarrassed and ashamed. When this is not the case, okay, and, uh, and and a situation presents itself where it would have been necessary, sure. I always have a pen on me. Always, I always have a pen on me. Mm-hmm. It's we. It's very important to me. I don't know why. Whenever I don't have one, I feel naked. Really? I don't I always have a pen on me in my bag? There are there. I think seven other pens. Um. I like having writing utensils on me. I also usually always carry a notebook. There are multiple different reasons for this. One of which is uh, for I have figured out about my own attention deficit disorder mm-hmm. that if I really need to remember something, I write it down in my little pocket notebook. And then for some reason, I don't need to look at it in my notebook. The act of writing it down and keeping it on my person physically helps me remember it. That's great. I don't know why that is. Mm-hmm. Whenever I have to memorize lines, I always... Uh, write them out myself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just locks stuff into my brain. That's, uh, that's right smart. Right now, I have uh, a Lamy ballpoint. This is like kind of their like lowest end. I have, I have been getting into uh, fountain pen- penery. Uh, I, I purchased my first fountain pen this sure. past year. Okay. Well, actually, it was gifted a fountain pen. Oh. And it was a wonderful present. Okay. Uh, another Lamy as well. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I also gave, I also gifted uh, pens uh, to uh, that. That was my groomsman present at my wedding. Were uh, these fun Lammy pens? Uh, those red ones that click that you see me have. Okay. Um, but I am very particular about uh, pens. I have an entire 
section of my bookcase is all pens. It drives Kimberly absolutely crazy. She's like, no one needs this many pens. And I'm they like, don't. I need it. But I have them in all different sorts of colors. I have them in all different sorts of shapes and sizes. Mm-hmm. I have the ball. The, the Lamy ballpoint has been serving me well. But I also do uh, uh, Bic and their uh, and their uh, what's the brand? What's or what's the style? Uh, I usually like a point seven is what I've been rocking right now. In you regards know to... the the millimeter size of the ball in the yeah. pens. But also, I have gotten into I nerd. writing. To me, I am an analog person when it comes to writing. You're a nerd. Uh, I mean, you've seen me. I, if we're ever taking notes about something, I could be. You are always taking notes on your computer, and I always have my notebook. I. It's just. Nerd. It's just how I operate. It's like I was taking notes uh, for. <laughs> uh, just nerd. Uh, I was taking notes uh, when, when I was watching this movie this morning. Now, did I leave my notebook on the coffee table, and I'm just not realizing that? Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you wrote it down. But so. I wrote it. But I wrote it down there. Uh, in a on a, and I was like, but I started taking notes on my phone, and I was like, ah, this isn't. I can't go fast enough. You can't go fast enough. You yeah. write faster than you type. Yeah, but is it legible? You know me. I have very good handwriting. Yeah, but it, I have very good handwriting. But is it legible writing that fast? The way your brain thinks. Uh, that's actually one thing I have enjoyed about uh, using the fountain pen is that uh, it, the way that the the uh at least this 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 lammy in sp- specifically uh has a sl- has more of like more slantward motion than you would anticipate from a fountain pen and so i can actually like if you draw in the direction that you're moving or you write in the direction you're moving but this is also another reason i have a pen and this is also something you know about me i oftentimes like if you've ever been on a video call with me or a video conference i have a lot um I am I am an active doodler. I know. I doodle like crazy uh-huh. whenever I'm like if I if I'm having a conversation with someone and I'm like trying to actively listen, I am probably doodling while I'm doing that. If you can't pace, you doodle. Yes. Oh, that you know, I never thought about it like that. That's what it is. I know. That's what it is, Lashy. I I know. Oh my god. You're just now realizing I this. I never, th- I never realized that. Really? But I really, yeah. I've known, that, ha- for, I've known on, that for years, Jay. If I'm on a phone call, I pace. I'm around. I know. I, I like. I will. You did it yesterday. You just walked away from me. I know. <laughs> I felt bad. I was so. I, I felt really awful. But I. That's just kind of, like, yeah. If I'm ever on the phone, Kimberly was like, "I think you touched every corner of our home while you were on the phone." And I was like, "Yeah, I don't know. I just, just keep it on speaker and turn it up so I can hear it." As yeah. Your, as your. That's but that's what I do now. I have it on speaker, and I'm just kind of walk, walking around the house, I'm not even doing anything. It's I, just I, 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 I like to I just go, like to go on a little adventure. But yeah, I just realized if I can't pace, if I'm on a video call or something, or if I'm like if I'm taking notes, mm-hmm. whenever I, I ta- I'm a very active note taker, and I like taking notes. Like when in like that's one thing about school I enjoyed was like you know the more lecture intensive stuff where you were taking notes because like I could. I could structure them in a fun way and I could doodle them and I could almost make my notes kind of like artwork in such a, in such a way sure. that helps me remember the information to kind of like make the, make the design, the structure and the design of the note taking a little bit more creative and fun helps me remember the information, which is weird, but I'd never made the connection that the doodling is just because I can't pace. I do like to stand. Uh, yeah. I mean, you've been on enough video calls with me that just sometimes I'm standing. And Eventually, I'm like, if, it, if it goes on, if it long, goes enough, on long enough, sometimes you're just like, wait a second, and just you just start standing behind the chair. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I like a I, – I am a standard black ink person. Oh, okay. I like a standard black ink, um, but I also – I appreciate colored ink, but that is more for accenting and for organization than it is for actual writing. All right. Because like I do have a Lamy that is has green ink in it right now, and that's more just for fun. Sure. But like when I'm organizing my schedule every week, like Kim, like when I write it down, I have like a little section for like what Kimberly has going on that week, just so I can know what's going on with her. Right. Like she has a pink pen to like differentiate her section, uh-huh. and then it's black ink. Sure. And then the boy is green. Hmm. Um, and then all of my stuff is just in black, but usually in a thicker. Um, I also differentiate between uh, people's 
uh, like my schedule and Kimberly and the boys schedule with a different thickness of pen. Yeah. I like pens a lot. Pencils? You know, I've been, I have been get. I'm a mechanical man, but I did see a, 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 I did see like a YouTube documentary about, uh, this, uh, these like artisanal pencils uh that like uh uh black uh that's gonna drive me crazy i'm going to have to look that up right now just Art- regale me about your Art- penery and i'm gonna find this brand um is it if a pen's in front of me great that's the one i like that's it but Blackwing, Blackwing pencils, cool because name. they were a, an old. They're an old brand that went out of business. But like Stephen Sondheim and Ernest Hemingway, like all swore by this brand. Sure. They said there was just something about this graphite. Uh-huh. So a company like reverse engineered them and like brought back the brand because they were like, yeah, you know, we were able to get the actual brand name because they didn't renew their copyright on it. But we couldn't figure. They had to like reverse engineer the the actual graphite. Sure. So, yeah. I am going to be asking for a box of pencils for my birthday this year, specifically black wings. But I'm usually a mechanical pencil man. And I have a really nice mechanical pencil. It's actually on me right now. It's actually quite nice. Cool. But I am the type of person, if you borrow my pen, I am. You will get it back. I am going to watch. I'm going to say, you can borrow this pen. I'm not moving until you give it back to me. Yeah. And that, and that was hell on earth when you worked at a restaurant. Because I got in some fights about people stealing my pens at the restaurant. I was like, that is a nice pen. I want it back. I don't care I don't care if you don't know where it is. You figure it out or you reimburse me. It's a thirty five dollar pen. Give get me my pen. You don't have this you should have like a, a set of like Bix just ready to go just in case someone no, asks you for a pen. Yes, I just, did you know. yes. Yes. But but also, you know <laughs> pocket pen. Yeah, I wasn't. I'm not going to sully my collection with a bunch of throwaway pens. No, it's not sullying a collection. It's it's just covered. And here's the thing: I am not a snob about penury. I am not. I'm not a snob about it. Like, here's the thing: pens are like are the closest thing I can imagine that I would get into, like like fancy watches or things like that. Sure. Like, if you want to get into really nice pens, there are some you can drop some coin on pens. Mm-hmm. But I don't. I don't necessarily like that. I don't want a three hundred dollar Mont Blanc. I don't care for that. Sure. I want something that's like going to fit my lifestyle. And I like these Lammies because they have the the metal uh, uh, pocket. Sure. Uh, they have the yeah. metal like tang. Sure. Um. So I. It's not going to snap off. Fair enough. Because the big roller balls that I like, um, those in particular, the the uh, they're the ones that have the little like little nipple on top that show what color they are. Sure. I can't remember the name of the um, the actual style right now because I haven't used them in a while because I've been using the Lammies. Little Lammies. <sighs> but do you do you like do you long for hand write things usually? No. I mean, I can still write cursive. Yeah. Which is a, unfortunately a dying art. Even well, it seems like it should just be kind of you know it's still important that we can visibly write things down. Even though we n- type everything, we still should be able to you know write on paper. Yeah, but allegedly. Yeah, but cursive is. I mean, I I'm well versed in cursive, and uh, um, but yeah, there's no there's no need because cursive was designed to write quickly, and we don't we just don't need it as if I mean with typing now it's just mm-hmm. not it's just not a thing anymore, mm-hmm. and, and now with the development of AI you're just gonna be able to talk. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. You also, it, I, I also relish in my handwriting, and I love you, but your handwriting is not the best. Oh no, I it's actually very, very good, but you've never actually seen me actually try. So when do you try? We've spent, Adam, we've spent so much time together. You told me you've never tried with your handwriting around me. When are you trying? Well, like when I was taking notes in school and stuff like that to be like legible for like long periods of time. But okay. now it's just like just scrawled notes on it. I'm not like criticizing you. I'm no, just, I know. It's merely just an observation. It's actually like really good, but I don't okay. actually like. Write then anything okay, nowadays. I'm. Uh, then I will say this. Do you know where where your really really good handwriting would come in handy? The whiteboard. Wow. You know. 
That that is very legible. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, but I'm just saying if you're, uh, it's more that like now I'm offended that like art, what we're doing, and all the organization of what we're doing doesn't deserve your best handwriting. Jay, writing like this no, on it a is, whiteboard no, it is, is drastically different than really writing like hard. this. I, I admit that I understand, and I'm leaning away from the mic, and I know that pisses people off, but sometimes I feel like it accentuates the moment. Um, <laughs> fidelity of space. <laughs> you understand that I'm exasperated. Je- I, I can't pace while he's podcasting. This is the next best thing. It's, it, it, yeah, and I won't let myself doodle because we're on camera. But but if this was audio only, oh, your boy would be a doodling. Oh, I'd be doodling because there are times where I've had to explain to people, hey, I'm gonna be doodling during this meeting. It me it. I assure you, it looks like I'm not paying attention to you. I assure you, it is helping me process what you are. I saying. have to keep other Jay busy so real Jay can be here. <sighs> That's also what it is. Yeah. You're just not realizing that, bud? I've known that for years. Other J sucks, man. I hate Other J so much. But here's the thing. Oh, boy. Here's the thing. Okay. You know, sure. Other J also has some good qualities that some when Other J is here, mm-hmm. he also hates the Other J. So which one's the Other J? We'll never know. Maybe we should do like a handwriting test. There's just two of me, and I'm and I, they both are they both have their issues. <laughs> I have to keep other Jay busy. All right. Pens. I just wanted to talk about my love of pens. Are you sharp? Do you like Sharpies? I love but Sharpies. But I don't give a rat's ass about I have, whatever I have every color I'm Sharpie. using. I know. Oh, I have every color of Sharpie. Does it have ink in it? Does it work while I'm re- using it? Great. That's the pen I like. Yeah, but like, you don't. No. Huh. I look forward to one day. Does I, this pen work? Yes, I like you. That's I look. It. I have like a whole box just full of old notebooks that I like. I think it's gonna be so fun for James one day to go through. Okay. Yeah. And I had the thought, you know, if I ever get like a weird diagnosis or something, and like we maybe I'm not not long for this world. I'm like I'm like cool. I get not cool, but I get to I can make a notebook and I can just write him letters for all of his big things in his life. Sure. And like, and I, he can, and I'll hide it in that little, and I'll hide it in that box. So, like, when he goes through all of my writings, he'll find it. But if I may just kind of inject just a little bit of reality into this whimsy, yeah. If that is something that comes to pass, you better make sure that there is something written or instructions of like, hey, you have to go look in this box no, at some more point. Fun, it's more fun if you find it. He's. You don't know my son. He'll be just like I'm me. I'm just He'll saying, have some the, Jay, the future's only going to get more technological. I'm just <clears> saying. <throat> it's a hard, it's a big box. It's hard to miss. Kimberly knows all about it. Sure. That big box would be just going to corner in the attic and just never get opened. No, this is this has all my genius in it. it has all my jokes, mm. my jokes in there, and mm-hmm. has all my, mm-hmm. yeah. Don't mm, mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. I'm just saying, if maybe you should like have a detailed like a scavenger hunt, to, that would be the ultimate, you know. Sure. Send him on a quest. Yeah, man. Yeah. What's on page forty-seven? Knowledge. Knowledge. That was a treasure all along. All right. So thanks for coming for uh, Jay's TED talk about I lo- pens. I love pens. I think. If I ask you, Brian, when I if I he he knew exactly what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. He knew exactly. He knew. What he was doing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is not. Yeah, this started in high school. Oh, uh, I'm. Oh yeah. yeah. No, no, I'm. I'm. Yeah. Fully aware. I used to have terrible handwriting, and then a girl that I thought was cute uh, made fun of me for my handwriting being bad, and I was like, never again. Yeah. 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 That's how. It and works. I and, yeah. and I and I went to my parents, and I was said, I was like, I need to. My, my handwriting needs to be better. My parents, who both have, truly, and it's one of the things I love about my parents, like just from a just from a surface level thing they both have spectacular beautiful handwriting and they were and they always were so upset that my handwriting was so bad and i was like my straight garbage my handwriting needs to get better my mom's like oh thank god here's what you need to fix your a's your t's your f's like here's how you're going to start writing these letters and it changed everything now i have changed the game now i have a wonderful and whimsical handwriting it's very fun anyways i could talk about this forever i know you almost basically did why you gotta be like that? I'm just letting you go why, off, why King. You gotta be like, <laughs> this has been a roll for convo. 
I'm not editing a second of this out. <laughs> nor, should, no. nor should you. And you know what? You it's just need good. to edit no, and here's in the to thing. make sure here's there's the thing. a lot of me in no. here of just looking at instead of the camera. Oh no, I've been I've I've set I've set the settings on the multicam up to uh, uh, on the wide shot to a lot because a lot of times it's just Jay going on tangents. Why else am I here, Lashy? That's what I do. You wind me up and the tangent machine starts a flinging. Um that's been roll for convo. Roll for convo. We gotta move on to the air, the, the the last airbender. Um, uh, thanks, Brian. Thanks for doing that. Really appreciate you. <laughs> you hold on by that yeah. much. Really make me look like a jerk in front of everybody. <laughs> no, he didn't make you look like a jerk at all. Just now, we know a lot more about your pen habit. Yeah, if I ask you for a pen and you tell me you don't have one, I I silently judge you. Mom, I got a, I got a mug full of pens. <laughs> yeah, but you had to search longer than I would have liked. For a usable I, I'm not really talking about you. I'm just saying, like, in a social setting. Oh. You just have pens in my backpack or in the mug. But I'm also... But I, do, I only judge you for a millisecond because I'm also so ashamed that I don't have one myself. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyways. All right. The Last Airbender. The Last Airbender. Uh, before we get into The Last Airbender proper, we should... There's there's probably a lot of information about this film that we should probably know about. I, I hope there's a lot of information, because I have so many questions. So many questions. Uh, wh- this is the part of the show where we throw it to our producer, Brian, to learn all of the nitty-gritty details about this film, The Last Airbender. Brian, why don't you roll that beautiful bean fun fact footage? Thank you, gentlemen. Producer Brian here. And today we're trying to fix the 2010 atrocity, The Last Airbender. Written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan, it stars Noah Ringer, Dev Patel, Nicola Peltz, Jackson Rathbone, and a whole host of other miscast people. It made $319.7 million on a budget of around $150 million. Here are some fun bean facts. It's awful and the casting is something else. Shyamalan was supposed to make a trilogy, and the original creators were excited for him to take it on because they loved his work, and he had respect for the material, as Shyamalan's family were all fans and they watch it all the time. However, the project was given the go-ahead without their approval and their opinion uh, when it was being created and produced. As Adam previously mentioned, this movie's name was changed from Avatar The Last Airbender to The Last Airbender to avoid confusion with Blue People Avatar. Now, they tried to make this for kids as much as possible, including that runtime. It is considered one of the worst movies and adaptations ever made. And if you care, it has a 5% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 1.1 out of 5 on Letterboxd. Now, I saw this movie in theaters opening weekend. Woof. And P.S. Gentlemen, I think I'd be a earthbender. An earthbender, um, if if that's what I bended. Anyway, back to you, gentlemen. Please enjoy writing your fix. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Wow. Yeah, that was that was what I exactly what I was looking for. I cannot believe all that happened for this movie to yeah. get made. That yeah. is nuts. Yeah. It's uh <clears throat> The more I've been thinking about this movie all day, the more I've been getting upset. Oh, yes. Well, here's the thing. When Avatar The Last Airbender came out in 05, I didn't watch it. I was not a college. <clears throat> I, yeah. It was, not, it, was, it was not geared towards <clears throat> me. No. When the movie came out in 2010, it was like, oh, they made it. Wasn't that cartoon from a couple years ago? Oh, that's okay. Well, that makes that makes sense. That's usually yeah. how things happen nowadays. And then when the movie came out, I didn't hear anything about it after that. Yeah. And the, the next thing was like, oh, Korra. Oh, from that's they're doing a sequel to that. oh that's neat maybe i should check that out it's it's streaming is one of the first yeah streaming well like things most people did. in our generation like brian got got into it really early but it was on netflix yes and that's how we got into mm-hmm. it like the the ne- it being able to stream and people mm-hmm. like and finding people finding online like oh maybe this is good mm-hmm. okay you know after it's like, yep after now that the it's first free, season free yep first season of cora and i was like oh that was actually pretty cool i know so, you know bending and the elements i kind of you know did like the big social things i knew but not the actual nitty-gritty of the story like oh yeah maybe i should watch this went through binge it on netflix yeah oh yeah man that was cool as hell neat but never went back to see this never never no, ever thought about moment. this movie ever until this week until we were like we should do it oh yeah i guess we should i also forgot my friend brian is in this movie uh my buddy brian charles johnson who i uh 
I, well, he and I shot a movie together many, many, many moons ago, mm-hmm. and I forgot that he is an extra in this movie. Oh, he's a waterbender. Cool. When they're all standing at the on the the bridge. Oh, you know the person that they like focus on to like move that shot around. That's him. Oh, cool. I went. Oh yeah, BCJ's in this. <laughs> ha ha! You're a waterbender, idiot. <laughs> I texted him. I was like, for, I was like, I was like, I'm watching the last Airbender for a podcast, and he went, "Oof, a doofa, oof, a doofa, indeed." Okay, uh, Jay. Before we get into dissecting this movie of many of the things, the issues with it, yeah. why don't you go ahead and give us a quick rundown in in, in uh, this week's episode or part of the blah, 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 plot drop? You forgot to tell everyone that it's everyone's favorite segment. It's of the show. A, because this is it's a lie. It's all for combo. <laughs> That's just it's no. It's it everyone's favorite. Yeah, every it's, segment it's, is everyone's favorite segment in the story. It's part of the. It's 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 in the constitution. And by in the constitution, I mean the terms of service that you clicked. Uh, I I agree to. Did you play this yeah. video or listen to? Yeah, this man. File? We snuck our bill of rights into a terms of service. Uh, anyways, uh, so plot drop for the last Airbender. Um, it, we we the the scene opens up on Katara and Sokka. Katara, yeah, that's right. Yeah, oh, just, for whatever reason, that is the way you said it, it was like this isn't Mortal Kombat. Oh, the duper mispronounced everyone Kitara. else's name. Yeah, yeah, it's Katara. Katara. Um. Oh, we'll get into the naming situation later, but uh, uh they are two uh cute little kids on the, in the South Pole, and, and they are part of the Water Tribe, and they are out and about and they are tracking a seal and they end up uh making a big uh sphere of ice to which they say don't go, don't hit that sphere yeah i know that was a that line was in a this line movie. The movie uh and they hit that sphere and they un- unleash a small boy uh and his big furry creature who have been frozen in ice and they bring him back to the water tribe and they find out that he is an airbender um when they release that boy from the ice, there's a large sky beam and a, a spooky ship uh, led by the Fire Nation and Prince Zuko and his uncle Iroh, who are out looking for the Avatar because Prince Zuko has been uh, has been excommunicated uh, and on this perilous and po- seemingly impossible mission to find the Avatar. He uh, attacks uh, the Water Tribe, takes Aang with him, Aang stunts on him. Oh, we find out his Aang is the name of the boy in the thing uh, from the, the from Katara Grand and Sokka. Grand. Yeah, uh, Aang goes with them in order to prevent the Fire Nation from hurting people, um, and uh, Aang stunts on them, gets out of there. Uh, not, but uh, not before doing tests, which I don't think this is from the show. It's not. That's what I thought. Running tests on him to determine whether or not he is actually the Avatar. And the movie undoubtedly confirms that, yes, he is the Avatar. And he bails and escapes with Sokka and Katara. Uh, they make their way... Um, make their way. They make their way to the uh, Aang's uh, tribe, uh, the Wind Nomads, uh, in the Southern Wind Temple, only to find they have all been wiped out by the Fire Nation. Mm-hmm. And we find out that Aang just ran, thought he ran away for a couple of days but has been frozen in the ice for a hundred years Whoa. so he yeah so he is uh the avatar has been missing for a century the fire nation has taken over the is taking over the world. world yep uh they uh uh upon uh getting to the, the, the he figures out that they have to go to the uh the northern water tribe from a spirit conversation with the dragon which makes no sense um and with going through the earth nation they free a bunch of earth nation from the firebenders and lead some small revolutions of small towns even though a lot of that is off screen montage ang tries to go to the northern wind temple to see if there's any wind people gets tricked by an, an old wind bender and um he is captured by a, another force of firebenders and in order to be the one to 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 actually bring the avatar to his dad, Zuko sneaks in and frees Aang uh, in order to be the one that quote unquote captures him. They make their way to the Northern Water Tribe on the North Pole, and they have to fight the Firebenders, and that's pretty much where it ends. Basically, They're, the same as the the book. 
the yes. end of the movie is ex- oh, the exact almost the exact same yes. from the cartoon. Yes, and they gave us they give us some characters that has that have four lines of dialogue and we're just supposed to know who they are. But yeah, that's about it. And the movie ends with Aang about to take on the fight like it ends in a pretty per- the, the the actual ending of this movie is so stupid. Everyone bows to Aang. And then a mid credit scene, Azula is unleashed. Oh, I didn't know there's a mid credit scene. There's a mid credit no, scene. No, I dropped the dice. The mid credit scene where the fire, fire Lord Ozai is like, hey, Azula, go get him. See you in movie two. Never. Never. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah. Was that fast enough for you? No. No? How would you have done it? Hey, do you know book one of Avatar: The Last Airbender? It's that I guess it's that just with all the character and Joyce. Well, well then what's out? the point then? If because it's for people who didn't maybe don't even know nothing about nothing. It's possible. Then what's people? the point of a plot drop if I'm going to be snarky about it? It's about being snarky. Okay, is it about being snarky? Yes, it's about being it's snarky. snarky. No, this is a the non. Le- this the is lesson not that a I learned. Show. The lesson I learned from Captain Marvel was to be fast and snarky. <laughs> fast and snarky. You heard it here for, <laughs> first, folks. No, but this this is a, a positive show. It is. All right. It is. So he, from from j- the first frame of this movie, we know we're in trouble. And granted, I know we're probably retreading a lot of ground that everyone covered t- yeah. you know, almost twenty years or fifteen years ago when they first saw this movie. But yeah, you know, this is the first time we saw it. But like the movie just starts, title. There's no Avatar in the title, and then there's a tech. No, the first thing, isn't the first. The first thing that happens is the intro to the cartoon of four benders in live action, which is actually kind of cool. But there's no dialogue. No, there's, it's just yeah people bending an element. Yeah, and there's no context for it yeah it looks and it makes it feel weird it makes it feel real weird yeah and then there's a text crawl which doesn't even really do a good job of setting up what's going on not even close and then we're just right into it with katara ooh, excuse me and soka Sokka just being out there on the on the ice and all of a sudden find an ang and they, they're on appa Getting out of there in, in the, ten in ten minutes. Yeah. Oh, it's fast. They're out. They're they're gone from the southern water tri- southern water tribe in ten minutes. Yeah. It is which is ridiculously fast. Here's the thing. That's fine. If you've got to move this movie, that's fine. But you've got to do a little bit of a better job in that first ten minutes, it, even from a dialogue perspective. Don't hit that sphere. Don't hit that sphere. Katara, don't hit that sphere. I was like, no one says that. That's not how people talk. For me, it's when I, I realized we were in trouble is when they started pronouncing everyone's names wrong. They just made a choice that like Ang was Ong. Ong, yeah. And Sokka was Soka. And uh Iro is Iro. Iro, yeah. And it feels to me like it feels to me that they're like, but we know better. We know how to pronounce this stuff. And I was like, this is not a real place. Like this is a this is a fictional story. Like that's like if I made a Hunger Games, uh, uh, in a Hunger Games like movie, sure. and I was like, no, it's pronounced Pita, and it's like, no, it's Pita. No, we you can just it's it's kind of like a it's a twist on Peter. It's Pita. Nope, nope, no. This well. You know, in most cultures, it'd be pronounced like this. It's like, this is not a real place. But this is, yeah, we This know is not a real place. The source material has a pronunciation. Yes. It has like almost 60 episodes I just, like, of how to pronounce it. I just would love to know why they made that choice. Because it feels it feels to me like they are posturing that it's just like, well, this is how these things should be pronounced. I was like, well, then why are our main two our main two water tribe kids the whitest kids I've ever seen? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. It's like it's like they're trying to be racially sensitive, but then it's like, but then it's like, guys, you're not nailing it. <laughs> like, it's not. It ain't it. Well, maybe. I mean, I don't know, and I'm sure Brian covered this, but like, it almost seems like that they were trying to make this a little bit more real. Sure. Because their outfits of the Southern Water Tribe are... Great! If this was, you know, Earth. Yeah. But 
it, that's not what the Southern Water. That's not the Water Tribe. They wear blue. They yes. just they wear blue. They wear blue. That's the because all their outfits that's are blue. How, because it's a kids show. Because that's, water wears blue. I'm so sorry. Water wears red. I'm so sorry. Wind, that's how it works. Air Wind wears yellow. Yellow. Earth, Earth wears, wears green. Brown. Green and, and browns. Green. Yeah. Yeah. That's just that's the color schemes. That's stop the, breaking it. What are you doing? What are you doing? Because if they're wearing first, then it would just like they wear blue. They just why are they they wear blue? What do you? They're trying to make it more serious, and then also simultaneously like making it seem stupider. Very stupid. Like it's like seeing him like him with his the tattoo on his head without it being filled in. I was like, that looks worse. Yes, it does. That looks bad. That looks terrible. And they're like, yeah, but the the arrow is not that realistic. I was like, yeah, but that's what he that's what he has. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta you gotta kind of can't just, just be a solid arrow. You There's gotta be some ca- detail in there. Yeah, if I've learned anything from the 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 One Piece thing is that like sometimes just doing the thing is the best course of action. It's a thing for the it's, stop it's trying the to thing for a reason. Stop trying to think of a better mm-hmm. thing. Some things it like fix the stuff that's kind of stupid. But like if it's you don't need to fix it if it ain't broke don't fix it. If it pretty much works in real life, just go with it. This movie to me simultaneous especially with the name changes and stuff and a lot of this stuff made it it made it seem to me like there were times in this movie where they were trying to tell me that this movie was trying to tell me that it understood avatar the last airbender better than i did but also there are large swaths of this movie that make me think that maybe the creators of this film Never watched Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, the, 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 the firebenders can just make yes. fire. Uh huh. Every time one of them was pulling fire from somewhere else, I was like, that is... Not how it works. Now, I can understand why they were, where that thought possibly came from. Sure. Because every other element user needs to have that element nearby. But But. that's one of the advantages of fire. They just make it with their chi. Yeah. That's, I don't, I don't know. It's just energy. It's just the rules, man. I don't know what to tell you. That's That's just just how it works. That's just how it works. And it would have made a lot of your fights a lot cooler yes. if you had just let them do that. Uh huh. Like when when Zuko is like finding like them with the the moon spirits and he's like got the big torch. I was like, look at that dork with a torch. Shouldn't need it. Torch dork. Yeah. Like you shouldn't need it. Yeah. Oh, you want to how to depower a firebender? Just put out the fire. Then he's, yeah. Then he's just got the martial arts after that, and you have your bending ability. You should wi- the fire. Na- the thing is that neuters the fire nation. Yeah. If they need a source of fire in order to bend, just take it out. Yeah. And then it's over. Then or it's they over. only, because Zuko had two shots with the fire he made in that last fa- fight. Yeah. If she just dodged out of the way, the fight was over. Yes. The Fire Nation doesn't take over the world when they need to, to supply their own fire. I mean, that's ridiculous. This is also something that has bothered me with the Netflix live action. Okay. If you are hit with fire, you are not pushed back. There is no kinetic energy in fire. That's a very good The amount of times people get hit with a fire blast and they are are pushed back. Nope. You stand there and burn. That's it. Or the fire goes, you know, if I would just go around it. It would go around Yeah. It really bothers me. It's In the live action, I'll take it because they are doing some wild kung fu in this Netflix show. It's nuts, yeah. The fighting is excellent. Mm -hmm. But But in this version, where where the fighting Lashy, it the fighting in this movie is a like most like a lot of this movie is is shot so poorly. Yes, it is, and so frenetic in moments that doesn't need it, and wildly still when there's nothing interesting happening. It's shot so poorly, but also it's do, it looks like. They just had everyone show up an hour early to figure out to like kind of improv their Oof. figure out their their fight choreography. Yeah, it could. I mean, whereas you have it's this not inspired at all. You have this it, no, 
There's no voice to the fighting. Nope. There's no. It just. It feels like a lot of the people just pushing each other around mm-hmm. in a way, and it, even the CG isn't helping it. Even when you have seven Earthbenders, Slashy. <laughs> Let's get to that. So. What this movie is trying to do is try to get as much as it can from each of the 20 episodes I- into this movie. Yeah. And they do it by the, the sacrifice of the characters. There's no characterization. There's yeah. no time for anyone to have any dramatic I think scenes Katara with anybody. and Sokka have maybe 50 lines between them in this entire movie. Possibly. Like well, Katara is doing voiceover. Sure. To help narration to help But it's the- but it's spotty. It oh, only it's terrible. It, it, I think it happens three times. Beginning uh somewhere in the middle and then to into act three to like, hey, we're at the Northern Wild Tribe. Sokka met this girl, they really liked each other, they're you know, falling in love, and then she sacrificed like it's just like what we barely meet we this girl. We barely character. meet this girl, we don't know anything about her. There's no characterization. I think to she has anybody. like five lines in the movie. Possibly, yes. It's most of it's them coming in her, in her last scene. Yes. Yes. It's really upsetting. But there's like every little nugget from the actual show that's in the movie is basically like a page and a half, maybe two in the script. And then we're just going and then montaging our way through other things you remember from the show. And then, but we don't have time for that. We got to go. Yeah. Because there's no, this, the movie is barely over 90 minutes. Yeah. When you could have, you could have given us a two and a half hour long movie and we all would have sat through it if you did it right. Yeah, two and a half hours. Probably you could probably get most of the you know all the flavors that you needed from book one. We didn't it's get barely to see, we didn't get minutes. to see the Earth Kingdom, like the actual Earth nope. Kingdom, like boot boot urns on that, like his cabbages. We didn't know cabbages. No cabbages. No cabbages. Again, I don't think they watched the show. I don't think they did. Well, they, they definitely didn't. So let's. So the scene where, and I think one of the important episodes in the beginning of the the cartoon is when uh katara they meet that go to that earthbending um village and they meet the young boy who can bend and then he gets captured and yeah. katara gets captured to go free the earthbenders who are in the ocean away from their element they yes. can't bend so they're prisoners yes and but it's in, a clever and interesting idea it's a great idea i understand for like the movie purposes like we would need to change that because we're not going to go film on some you know oil uh drill out yeah. in the ocean. We don't have the you know, money for that. We're not going to, you know. Then don't do that story. Then don't do that story. But they did that story and had a bunch of, a bunch of earthbenders, people S- who can bend the earth. Sitting in a quarry, like a full on, like they were in a. Feet on the ground. A pit of earth. It was like a pit. Yes, it was. With maybe. It was like ex- fit- It was like super dirt. Like it was like <laughs> real. Like it was just like. They could have been. It was the most dirt it was, dirt could be. You know? Yeah. I mean, like it was just like. It felt like it was like. You guys put all the earthbenders here? Like this isn't. On the earth? What like you even- guys put the waterbending prison in the middle of the lake? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Who thought that this was a good idea? You guys took over the. Basically the entire planet? How? How? What? So, just no, after we've seen that episode, I was like, oh, that was a great episode. Katara tries to, you know, tries to lead a rebellion, like, learn some things along the way of, like, you need a plan before you, like, start a rebellion. No, but also it's, like, you know, the, the, the mindset and, like, the interesting aspect of subjugation and, like, what... Yes. You know? It's, exactly. like, hope is, is not as cut and dry as you think. Exactly. It's actually kind of complex. Yes. And then... They arrest our, our main trio. They get thrown into this dirt pit with, with Corey, with all these other earthbenders. And, inside and there's of, a lot of earthbenders. There's a there. lot of them. And not that many firebenders. Maybe 12. <laughs> and then inside of, I want to say. They could have one way out in literally easily, the first day. The first day. One way out. <laughs> Earth way out. <laughs> that would have been awesome. They could have just pulled a King Boomy and just gone, ha! <laughs> <laughs> just like trust fall into the earth and been gone. 20 seconds in, Aang just like, I'm the Avatar. Uh, Everyone rise up in rebellion. Dude. And it's a terrible speech. It's yeah. horrible. It's really not yeah. well delivered. And all of a sudden, then and here's the thing. And I've seen this on TikTok now, and uh, it's been floating around. And I really thought that someone had doctored the footage from the film of six or seven earthbenders doing like a kata and then you know to like earthbend and then a boulder floating from off camera 
oh you know to you know over and then somebody kicks it into a firebender it's like that can't be it was actually in the movie that's not how earth bending works yeah. one person can just do boom boom and then all of a sudden there's really r- rad cool stuff shooting out the ground all over the place yeah not it doesn't take seven people to move a boulder the size of this table one person can do that that is the honest to god's truth what happens in this movie yeah it takes seven people to move a small rock yeah. for someone else to kick it to take out one guy yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible, and then, then the scene's over. Yeah, the whole that 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 one episode is like, oh, we gotta get move through, move through these pro- plot points. Sure, but that little scene, maybe three minutes. Yeah, terrible. But and then we're on to the rest of the montage. Terrible. Terrible. And I just I feel bad for the I feel bad for this the kid that played Ang, because like he's working his butt off. And also, like, he is a very clearly very accomplished martial artist. And he's doing a lot of cool, rad stuff. But, like, it's hard. Like, the wind, the way that they did a lot of the wind stuff here, A, his, the choreography was, like, just not it. And also, the way that, like, they had this character. I, I just think they also had a fundamental misunderstanding of some of these characters. Like, the, the extent to which Aang rushes to fight, like, fight, fight. Mm-hmm. In this movie, I found completely took me out of it. Oh, whereas like even in this, the the new Netflix live action mm-hmm. that we've been watching, like Ang fights, but there's but there is a sense of I'm just trying to get away from you, not a I'm trying to absolutely murder some fools. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? There's a difference, and it's yeah. I just <sighs> so many of the sequences in this movie are shot so wide that it makes absolutely no sense. I'm like, why are we this far away from what's happening right now? We're so far away. Why are we so far away? It makes me think that like they thought that there was going to be some CG that they just kind of ran out of budget for. And then also there's so many conversations that I'm like, why are we so close to these people talking? We're so- Aang's head is huge on my screen <laughs> right now why is he so huge on my screen and i'm like it's probably i was like honestly it's probably reshoots of some kind probably. to some degree it's Maybe. gotta be yeah. but like there's but also what are they reshooting i don't know man yeah the the movie moves so fast to try to get as much as it can from the show in that there's just there's no time there's to no time care. there's no time to care you, you don't, don't know care. what anyone's deal is like, there's no reason Sokka and Katara should go after Ang. Aang. Wow. There's just no reason. Yeah, it's he, Aang. It's, it's Aang. Aang. He, he, just, he falls out of the sphere they shouldn't have hit, and then the next is like, oh, I'm not, we're not taking him with us. And the next Don't thing, hit that sphere! And the next thing, the next scene, he is already up, putting a shirt on, and like, yeah, let's go. And it's just like, there, there's no time. Nothing breathes. There's no character moments. There's no... None. You don't care about these characters at all. No. You don't. Because they're not they, characters. They tried to with Zuko. They tried. With that little flashback, they did they did some some. Kind of. But it didn't get there. Well, I mean how the um uh General Zhao um pulls up alongside um Zuko's boat and he's like, Hey, you wanna come over for dinner? And he and he does just for a lore dump. Yeah. And then leaves. Yep. It's lit- that scene with literally all hundreds of extras. Yeah. Just the lore hundreds dump. Of and it's maybe a minute long. Yeah. So so unnecessary. Yeah. And then at some point later, it's like Zuko like pulls in a little kid. Hey, what do you know about Prince Zuko from the Fire Nation? Oh, I'm gonna I lore- know these things. I'm gonna lore dump and blah 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 blah. Yeah. Like, okay, bye. Next scene. Why? It's just, and Uncle Iroh is so not Iroh. It's honestly maybe the most egregious thing of the entire, because it's me, Iroh is one of the most, like, it's one of the most iconic roles and performances in the original cartoon. And to them not understanding that they need to at least get close to that vibe Mm -hmm. shows to me a fundamental, again, I'm not sure they watched this movie. They didn't. Like, like, they, like they killed enough. They watched the, the show, rather. But, someone just had bullet points of like, hey, these are the things that happened. 
Yeah, Uncle Iroh. He's his uncle. He's kind of wisecracking, and bro, I'm like, yeah, but there's, the, but it's, it, it's so much deeper. I than actually that. appreciated the actor's performance that he did give. Oh, he's wildly miscast, but I actually appreciated his performance. Yeah, it's, I, you know what, I, there's none of the actor. It's not their fault. No, they were doing the best no. they could with what, 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 what little they were given. This yeah. is all from the. Uh, this is all M Night Shyamalan's. He's it's he wrote, really, produced, and directed it. It's really the only writing credit was his, and I believe Brian can backed me up on that when he did his bean facts and it's it's uh, i understand i understand why hollywood didn't just didn't want to deal with him after this movie because straight up i mean watching this movie i was like this is i was like this is a a triple a film like this is hollywood with a capital h movie Mm -hmm. and but this was made it this was made so the amount of like just fundamental filmmaking truth truths and tent poles mm-hmm. were just completely not a part of this film. Like the, there's so many of these shots were set up in such a way that I was like, there's no fidelity of space. There's no fidelity of time here. Like it, look yeah, at there the, isn't. Yeah. what's this stage picture right now. M night. What's this stage picture? Like, because I don't who were you also doing this in photography too? Because I, I, I yeah. Wow. Huh. Yeah, it's I I feel like that when people who saw this movie in you know big you know, huge fans back in the day, right? Yeah. Who went to go see this movie and they think everyone was like really pumped for it and <clears throat> like getting let down. It's like, you know what? I feel like that you know the Avatar fandom has like I now know what they felt like because I had No. I we've all I think it seems at this point a lot of fandoms I've had a, a, a oh boy a new ver- a film for the franchise I love and I'm getting like very let down or even talked down to yeah in the movie you really, you really want to like I was like oh man they went they went through this back in 2010 yeah. holy crap <clears throat> yeah I now, like yeah now I, I get the hesitancy everyone's like absolutely. so worried about the Netflix show I feel bad for for like people who are really into it when this movie was dropping because like that's because here's the thing like are the prequels awesome no. But like, does Wait. does George Lucas at least know how to set up a shot? Yeah. Does he basically understand Star <clears throat> Wars? Yes. Yeah, he can make like, yeah, yeah, he's gonna make an actual movie. Mm-hmm. He's not just gonna like take a camera out somewhere and just figure it out. Sure. Which is what this movie feels like. This movie it feels like they were just f- like, oh, what you know, let's just go out. Well, we got all the igloos set up. We'll just you know figure out what the shots are gonna look like as we go. You know, we just we're just kind of loosey goosey here. No, this is a Hollywood movie. This is the opposite of loosey goosey. This is tight, tidy. Uh, tidy flighty, tidy. Uh, there's no bird. There's no bird. Loosey goosey, tidy. Go lo- no, no, no. But you know what I'm saying. I do know what you're saying. The fact that this movie is over, barely over 90 minutes, the try the, the gall of trying to condense. What did I say? When we did it in uh, episode one or two. That is like, oh, there's like six and a half, almost seven hours of actual like cartoon. To try to condense that down to just yeah. over 90 minutes. No. And the Netflix shows combined are an hour longer. Can I also give you a hot take? Sure, I, like, I love hot I takes. I think the ending of book one is stupid. With the Northern Water Temple and then having the spirits and stuff. And yeah, it's dumb. It's, yeah, not, it's it's it doesn't. It's a little. It's not it. It's <laughs> yes because it. <laughs> it's I, just I, not it. I agree, and I can't tell you why. It's just not it. No, no, I, I can tell you why. Because and granted, we're, we'll get there when we watch when we get through the back half of the, uh, book one, but. For the most of book one, it's they they need to get to the water the northern water tribe yeah. to learn how to water bend, and it, and then the whole finale is not is not really about him learning how to it's not really about him water bending it is in that he you know he eventually defeats him with water bending that's cool yes but all the stuff leading up to it but then they they reintroduce like spirits like taking mortal form to be on the mortal plane and that kind of being the it muddies the water it muddies the water yes because we learned about the spirits. In the uh, in the two parter episode with the solstice and the evil panda and then uh, talk, talking to Roku and all that, it's like okay, that's cool. But that Neat. also establishes then, that when spirits take form in the real world, it's usually not a good thing. Yeah. And then I'm like, so these are good ones of that, but also why? And also they really lean into that to the girl mm-hmm. and her story, and I was like, I don't. We know her for three episodes. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. I want to see Ang learn how to water bend. 
that's what I signed up for. But but I digress. That's not yeah. important. That's no. more of a comment on just like the the first book writ large. Yes, yes, yes. Drink because it um, it just it feels like that wasn't the normal progression of where the end would be. It kind of felt like it, that was it, an element directed at the f- end. All the last thing I will say about it: when we find ourselves in the Northern Water Tribe, and you there there's a, there are all the conversation about the fish and whatnot. Mm-hmm. You that you have a thought. You go, how did we get here? What was everything leading to to talk okay. about fish and spirits and is this? And stuff? It feels like there was a mistake. I feel like the camera was supposed to be following Aang and we're with Sokka and this girl right now. I'm not sure what's happening. I mean, that's at least one thing that this movie did a, did a service is that they cut their conversations down to basically nothing, mm-hmm. to a point where she's just like, "I'll give my life," and it's like, "Who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, neat. Anyways, yeah, we should probably move into fixing this. Yes. Now. Now. So far, so good with the Netflix show of condensing the how to turn book one into a different version of itself. But also thematically keeping their characters in a human place. But also like understanding understanding where you're where you're going. Mm-hmm. It has a direction to it. Whereas this movie just went felt like it was like hey isn't it cool you're seeing this part here we go yeah yeah so i i had an idea and we could we can adjust this if we need to no let's hit me come on so my thought is instead of trying to do basically the impossible and squeeze you know six and a half hours worth of content down into i which i think would be a healthy two and a half hour ish movie yeah that i think the best way of attempting to actually make a movie version of book one is to kind of even take a a further step back from like trying to recreate the book or recreate the content. Sure. And retell the story, but in movie form in more of a looser sense of what are the character journeys that our main characters go on through book one. Okay. And then recreate those journeys through the movie. Not trying yeah. to hit certain, you know, we can if there's elements we can pull in from the individual episodes, that's great. But like we're not beholden to those exact moments. The journey's what's most important. Yes. So if we can figure out a way of having Aang have a hang up about his powers or what have you, because the Netflix shows definitely go with him scared of his power, and the actual cartoon is just like he just didn't want the responsibility, and the movie was kind of similar to that but we didn't spend much time on it because i just ran away yeah um yeah and they get to that that conversation is it that conversation is like three lines <laughs> really and it happens basically immediately yeah it's like uh. yeah but if we can do it like in a normal three-act structure of these characters you know learning something about themselves and maybe because i mean this is basically star wars yeah so like if we kind of Star Wars or you know, New Hope this a little bit of what's yeah. the nor- what's the journey of these characters as they get to the Northern well, Water Tribe to learn the thing to stop you know to get to a stopping point. First things first, I, I like this idea and I think this is this is a perfect way to talk about because we we look we've been talking so much about Avatar from so many different places for the past couple like, of weeks. It's yeah. truly I, I even watching this movie I was like are we really there's how many of these are that we gonna do. <laughs> How many of these are we gonna do? Again, I don't understand when people are complaining about the live action. It's so far so good. It's as good as it's guys. It doesn't. They squeezed get, Jet in there. Do you know how hard it is to make stuff? It's never happening again. You better just you know l- love the one you're with. You it's know true. what I'm saying? Yeah, this is probably the last shot at it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. Well, quick note. Uh, numbers came out over the weekend. Like it apparently did better than One Piece's opening weekend. Really? Yeah. I'm, I'm by a lot i'm not surprised i'm not surprised it has way more a, a bigger western audience bigger western audience yeah. for sure um yeah but movie forming movie this forming. type of where where are we opening this movie well because that we've we, in the live action netflix mm-hmm. there's they made a very interesting choice to they did. start with at the beginning of the war which i thought was actually very effective mm-hmm. because it sets the given circumstances of our world and sets the the terror that is the Fire Nation up quite well. Mm-hmm. So is that something we're interested in doing in this movie? I think if we I, if we have two and a half hours, it's not a ton of time. 
and there is a lot to move through. My thought is if we do it correctly and we, you know, do take a, a new hope as kind of a you model want. of, you know, a hero with a thousand faces. I'm into it. Like, we could do a tech... We could do the opening of the... They should just have done the opening of the cartoon of pe- four people bending with someone's narration over it and, like, everything was yeah. fine get, okay. until the Fire Nation attacks. And then maybe we get a little bit of a montage of, like, that war and, like, there's a, maybe a little bit more of an explanation of, like... Where where our world is right now. Well, then we could do like a te- we could do a text because I don't crawl. even think the cartoon really establishes what the status quo of this world is really. Because it, it, they're like the Fire Nation attacked, and I'm like, yeah, but we go to all these other places and they're all fine. So what's the problem? That's a good point. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm so, like, well, an Earth Kingdom's fine. The Water Kingdom seems to be fine. So who's in trouble? So what if we started with instead of we would, instead of doing a text crawl, but get, still giving us like the the linchpin everyone wants of the four people bending and then into, and everything was fine until the fire nation attacked. Maybe if it's grand doing it to a bunch of kids. Yeah. Okay. And then we have Sokka and Katara there, like, you know, listening to the story. Cause like, it's important to teach the kids what's going on. And we, you know, and so, you know, and here, and maybe in, in that's the spirit of that. If we want to get more information out of that sequence, grand kind of does like the intro quote unquote. Mm-hmm. And then grand is like, you know, it's it's an important part of our family to be passing down, like you know, the history of the of of our lands to the children. So, like, I'm gonna give this to it's now Katara's turn to like teach you the rest of it. And so, like, maybe we get oh, a little bit yeah. of a montage of Katara like teaching the kids of like what the status quo is right now. Mm-hmm. And you know, we establish that like, yeah, all of your parents are off like fighting or like, yeah, are they though? Where are they fighting? It's never really clear. I, I, are they fighting or are they dead and their the show's trying to be coy? I think we will see that in the back half of book one. There's some more information about the parents. Oh, that's but right. Katara's right, mom right. is dead. Yes. Um, I think her dad, their dad is out and about. I think he's still oh, that's alive. Right, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I have seen that episode. Um, but I think we start with, you know, we, we start with Katara and Sokka being like, you know, very similar to what the Netflix show has done, which was the masterful job of like aging these characters up to be like, no, I'm the leader. I have responsibility and like, and you got to keep your bending on the DL yes. because if you bend, like we don't know if the, the fire nation is going to show up. That's for yeah. They don't want benders. And I think, I think Sokka's journey in particular, I think from the live action Netflix, I think this is a, an important thing to steal, but I think you can mind jokes from it a little bit better because he is comic relief at the end of yes. the day. Mm-hmm. But I think there's a more elegant way to do it. Yes. I think you just lean in harder into the into Sokka really trying to make everyone around him think that he knows what he's doing. Yes. And he aggressively doesn't. He's a young man up doing more than he's capable of. Thrust in a position he's not ready for, doing yes. his best. And I, I would almost say that like I think the Netflix version shows its hand a little too soon with that. I would almost have him bungle along for a good amount of this movie and then have a moment in act two into act three where Sokka's like, yeah, like you have no idea the pressure I'm under. And like, I, yes, I'm the low point of act two. Yeah, when everyone I, yeah, fights. I have to pretend yeah. like I know what I'm doing all the time and it goes terribly every time. But like, if I don't pretend like I know what I'm doing, like people get hurt. Like dad left me in charge and I don't know what the, I was 13 Katara. I don't know what to tell you. Like I'm doing the best I can. Like, I wasn't meant to do this, but here I am. I got this weird little boomerang. I don't know how any of this works. I got works. my bonk club. Let's like, go. Yeah. What am I supposed to be? Yes, exactly. I think that's... And, and So that can give us some more comedic relief there, but it will have a bigger emotional payoff. Mm-hmm. I think from a, from Katara's journey, I think should be... She's a very talented bender, but... um, And I think the movie this the movie we watched today had kind of gave us shades of that and the show and the cartoon and the live action to some degree but i want to lean into it i think uh it's a ptsd situation it's a it's a trauma of loss sure i think i think she's she the the her fear of the fire nation Mm -hmm. and her and her like her losing her mother so Mm -hmm. tragically and so visibly, like mm-hmm. she was there. Yes. Um, I think that is the thing she has to overcome 
to to bend. The movie did try to do that. It tried yes. to, it's, but it's, it water bending is all about your emotions and letting them out, and that helped Aang more tactically than it did Katara, who didn't really do a ton during the finale. She kind yeah. of fought Zuko and a little I, bit and then was basically out of the fight. And it's like I think, and I think there is. Uh, I want to. We'll get this in Act Three, but I think you know and this happened in the cartoon. She trains with him mm-hmm. in the Water Temple, and I think that should be a part of this movie mm-hmm. because I think there is a lesson to be learned of like, yeah, I love that like water bending is about it is more tied to emotion than any other bending that you do mm-hmm. um, because water can be many different things. It can be still, it can be tranquil, but it can also be it can also be wildly turbulent. But it's the kind of thing where if you try to force it too much, it will not. The river flows where the river flows. Ooh, I like that. You know what I mean? Yes. And it's like if you try if you try to make the the river turn right when it goes left, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like if you try to if you put too much bad juju into this, that's why she kept bending backwards. She keeps doing this, and you know, the whip goes the other way. Oh yeah, a thousand yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah. So I think those are our two journeys for our like main characters. Mm-hmm. But what's ang- what, what's our ang angle? Our angle. Appreciate you. You should. I'm great. <laughs> well, let's see. We don't see. Here's the thing, and the movie did did it the right way, in that it didn't have time for Aang to like run away because he didn't want the responsibility, so he wanted to you know screw around for half a half a season. Yeah. So they kind of like no no I just didn't want the responsibility. Yeah. Which is great, um, because it is a way of. That is a way of doing it that he has to accept the fact that he has to accept the mantle by the end. But we don't, if we're doing a one, if we're doing one movie of book one, we don't have an entire act to, for Aang to be screwing around. We don't. And it's what, I, the one thing I don't like about the cartoon is that like it, I understand what they're going for, but it takes forever for the adventure to get going because he doesn't want to accept the responsibility mm-hmm, of it. Mm-hmm. And that's an interesting take. I think they could have done a better job with it, but whatever. Um, I don't think that's an active enough thing for this character it's not. to move forward. And I, I like the live action Netflix and that like, I'm too powerful at this. Sometimes like I accidentally hurt people. I don't want to hurt people. Um, I mean, it could be, I mean, he doesn't use the avatar state at the end, but it could be a little bit more like, you know, Hey, um, um, just in the forest, Luke. Just reach out with your feelings. Type of like, can I can I posit something a take for this character that has never been utilized before? Sure, I think that could that's a little bit more active. Sure, I like the idea, and this is one thing that this that the last Airbender movie did a good job of. I think kind of explaining or giving credence to. Mm-hmm. Um, he has been many different people. He has. He is a reincarnated version of himself, mm-hmm. and I, I maybe maybe in this in this quote unquote movie, we have an Ang who is trying to be his own. He wants to be his own person, and he wants and he likes who he is, and he doesn't like the fact that make him being the Avatar means that he's so many other different people, and there's there's that means there's so many other expectations on like who he has been. Oh. and who he will be and he's just trying to be his own self i like that and i think maybe the lesson ends up becoming is just like just because you've been all these people beforehand like doesn't mean you get to you, you get to make your own imprint on yeah the avatar continues the avatar is not just one person over and over again the avatar is a journey like and maybe yeah. that's the yeah roku wasn't sochi and sochi wasn't you know it's it's the it's them reaching out to him the entire time, and he's like... And maybe and maybe some of the hiccups in his training is he is trying to access these other these other avatars and how they bended, and then it eventually gets to a point it's just like, no, this... Like, how does Aang do it? Like, maybe... Yeah, maybe. yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just that that's maybe a little bit more active. I don't know if that necessarily fits, but I think that could very well be... It's a different. It's a different take. It's not. It's not bad, because I mean, because it needs a. It needs to be different. Yeah. Because we don't have time for the actual like avoidance and rejection of the call. 
Yeah. To eventually get there. We don't have six and a half hours. We got to have the journey that gets over within two and a half and hours. And I think maybe you have situations where people keep trying to call him the Avatar and he's like, I'm Aang. I'm not the I'm, you can just I don't, call, please. You just call me Aang. Yeah. You just call me Aang. I'm Aang. Like, I'm me. I'm cool. Isn't look, it fun? Look, look how cool I am. Wee! Wee! Yeah. Bonk! Yeah. Like, yeah. Like the coolest. Yes. Just to, just, he needs to accept the role, the, the, the mantle, the history of it. That's the is, ultimate is weighing moment. Him, is is when weighing, he, him, weighing him down. Yeah. And I think, yeah. And it, it eventually needs to get to a point, yeah, where he accepts the mantle of Avatar. That's the pe- that's the ultimate. That's the change in this movie, at least. Because he can learn to waterbend. That's fine. He could waterbend at the end, and that's cool. But like, that's not going to help him actually stop the Fire Nation from attacking the Northern Water Tribe. Yeah. He's got to tap in. No, he does use. I'm sorry. He does use the Avatar State to do the thing. Yeah, yeah. Make all those tornado. Yeah. Wa- all those water spouts. Yeah. You know it's better than one tornado, right? Two tornadoes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a couple tornadoes in this movie that I was like, man, I'm, man, I'm not watching this Adam right now because I want to tell him this should be two. Yeah. Okay, so those are th- our three main heroes. Okay. What's but Zuko is also a main character. Okay, he's basically our villain. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I don't think we have to do much with Zuko, with Zuko. Okay. I mean, he's in the movie, obviously. Sure. But I would argue that I would argue that if we stick, I think the cartoon does Zuko and Iroh better than any anybody else. Mm-hmm. I think if you cast well, and I honestly, I think Dev Patel did a great job. He sure. was working his butt he, off. He was doing the best he, he just could. Just wasn't. It wasn't the right. It wasn't the right move. Nope. At all. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's so cut and dry what he's trying to make happen. Mm -hmm. He's really trying to, maybe the only thing that I would lean into in this movie would maybe, if there's some kind of reconciliation or some kind of conversation between Iroh and Zuko about Mm -hmm. like, hey, your dad sucks. I've been trying to like lead you to this conclusion that you don't have to do this. We could just go chill somewhere. We got a whole boat and you're still a prince. Like we still get paid. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sure. Like we could just, we could go do whatever you want. It's really not a big deal. I, I think there's gotta be some kind of, some kind of payoff there because we eventually get a Zuko that is, you know, a good guy. Eventually, like, yeah. It takes a while. It does take a while. I don't know. You you tell me. I feel like you have more of an affection for this character than I do. Well, I mean, I, I understand he's driven, like, passionately driven to get the thing that he wants. He just, unfortunately, at the moment, is wanting the wrong thing. Or the thing he can never have. His, he'll never get his father's love, ever. Yeah. He just won't get it, ever. No. Iroh knows that and is trying to be like, but, like, he doesn't want to just come out and say, your dad doesn't love you, man. I love you. I'm your dad. Peter, yeah. I'm your dad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I think... Well, here's the thing. Maybe we can structure Zuko's Maybe journey... Maybe we'll find Z- where Zuko is once as we figure out what stories we want to keep putting yes. in this movie. So, yeah. let's let's move into that. Because I think... I think cause I, Cause Because a lot of his stuff is circumstantial. Yes. Because I think using the fantasy um you know star wars lord of the rings you know how the fantasy tropes right we need a older wizard type character to help lead our characters on the journey right yes iroh is clearly zuko's yes i think boomy could be ang's i would agree but he's not gonna he's not gonna be around for the whole movie he's like they're gonna still i think they stop at omashu i think omashu is like the first move well no, no 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 The first move is the southern, the southern. Right. So we start. So act. So here's the act one, right? Basically, I think we start with act one. It's basically all the same, with them, uh, you know, meeting the water tribe, and comes out of the, the sphere that they shouldn't have hit. He, you know, gets acclimated to like what's going on. It's like oh, it's been a hundred years. What? <laughs> hey, information download about what's happening. Yeah. And I think let's the, find out about the hundred years as soon as possible. Yeah. And I th- let's get that out of the way. And I think we have the whole, um the fire uh, zuko showing up and that being the big like the stormtroopers killing Aparu. yes that i think that is our impetus to get the heck out of here yeah and i think well i mean that should be the, the end of act one should be them 
um, fleeing from the water tribe. The end of Act One. Well, the, 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 the maybe at the end of Act One. I got. I think the end of Act One is them getting to the Southern Wind Temple. Okay. And and Aang coming to grips with that it is a hundred years and everyone's dead. And I think we we establish with with Sokka is like we will help you get someplace safe, but then we're going back. And Katara like kind of, um, kind of agreeing with him. And then once they get to the southern uh, the Southern Wind Temple, that's when we get a little maybe a little bit more of a uh, lore dump and connection between the three of them. Sure. Um. And then I think once he has that meltdown at the at the um, at the Southern Wind Temple, it all it always bothered me that they call them the the Air Nomads. Why is that? Uh, because they're not nomads. They have buildings and homes, and they all live there. You mean giant temples in the sky? Yes, yeah. they're not nomads. Well, maybe they just nomads. So maybe from place some to of place. them are, and I appreciate that. Like, but they're not nomads. Sure. They're monks. That's not a. That's a very stationary life. Sure. They usually stay in one place. Anyways, I think that's our end of Act One. Okay. The and the, the, coal- the coalition the coalescing of the group. Them deciding like them deci- all making the decision that like you know what, no one is safe with the Fire Nation. If he's the Avatar, they witness him being the Avatar, and they're like. We we this can't is the legends of old. Yeah, we can't not help now. Like Grandma is doesn't want us to come back. There's no way. Like she's always said that. Like she's always known that our our lives were going to find us. Mm-hmm. This is what happened. Like something to that effect, and that's what coalesces our group. Mm-hmm. Um, and Katara is also like you know if he's got to go learn how to water bend, like I want to go too. Yeah. Like, I'm coming, and Sokka's like, absolutely not. She's like, you can't, can't tell me what to do. And Sokka's like, well, I'm his body. I'm I'm the I'm the Avatar's bodyguard now. So. And so maybe that's a little bit of his, like, oh, no, I have a, be- I have a way better position now. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm much more important. Yeah. Now, here, what's the next move? That's the question. That's, yeah, because here's the hard, because this is, this is where the hard part is. Yes. What, what makes it in? Because the Netflix show did a very good job of squeezing things towards um yeah uh, kayoshi village yes um, and i think that really worked i think it really worked i don't think I don't it would have, have made the him. cut i don't think so in this in, in 2010 and, and it sucks no. that it, because they're awesome but like i don't think for the movie's perspective for their journey i think we have to keep it more focused on them yeah and so i do this sounds lame sure not lame but Maybe too easy. Okay. I have two thoughts. Sure. Either when he has the Avatar, like the Avatar moment at the Southern Wind Temple, either that's when Master Roku contacts him and they make their way to the Fire Nation in order to commune with that spirit and figure out what to do and Mm -hmm. go, or he's just communicated that information, or we go to Omashu and we go and we do a little bit of a boomy situation and perhaps maybe we can swing in um maybe that's like where we there's an avatar moment in there somewhere maybe in in the fight with boomy in the end there's an sure. avatar moment mm-hmm. he's communicated with about needing to go find the northern water tribes mm-hmm. because this movie did the same thing the show did the live action show did it's like the comet does not get brought up. It's like you need to go to the Northern Water Tribe. Yeah, the, moment, the comet gets mentioned at the end of the movie, but it's like there's no not, there's no need yeah, for it. There's no need because it's like it's gonna be three years in the movie. It's like oh, it's gonna be three years because the sequel is like sure, but yeah, and the show's like hasn't mentioned it yet because like we don't need to. Yeah, it takes long to film these. It's things. Not necessary. So yeah, just go to the water, Northern Water Tribe. Danger's going. Yeah. Danger. The spirit world. The spirit world is in danger. What if? Okay. They called the shot now. You need to go to the Northern Water Temple because there are very influential spirits that are in trouble. And if the Fire Nation attack destroys the Northern Water Temple and takes out these spirits, then all of nature 
which is already out of balance because of the Fire Nation, will be even more so. And your rep- job, your job as Avatar, is to maintain the or the, the balance, balance of nature. Mm-hmm. And these these creatures are are a large, like largely impact a good amount of like water bending won't exist if these don't happen if these don't exist. There you go. So that's great. Sets the stakes. Yep. Got to get there. Here's the reason why they're in danger. Yeah, I think we get a little Omashu and we get a little bit of that vibe. We get the Boomy situation because mm-hmm. that's just fun. Yeah, and Boomy can kind of like be that, you know. Should we? I mean, this is. What if? No, I know this is the this, this is, is the, the hard, hard part. This is the hard part. The middle is where it's hard because we know where it starts and we know, know where, where it ends. ends. Yes, it's how to get from how to get from the South Pole to the North Pole. And have these some of this journey in, in between here. So what if is they, the 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 gang does not get like caught up in um um rock candy or whatever? Like they can just have Boomy can just you know challenge you know Ang yeah. to a thing and it turns out oh it's my friend Boomy, um and it's like oh great and then maybe like at, they're treated to the kingly treatment and maybe you know Boomy shows him you know back when we had when the Earth Kingdom when when the Avatar was an Earthbender yes that's exactly where it's going. That that they that Omashu has some type of shrine or memorial or something, because it seemed like in the cartoon, like there just was there was Kiyoshi, Avatar stuff all over the place. Just put Kiyoshi stuff. That's the name. I got that. I right. think I believe so. Yeah, Kiyoshi just, stuff. Just yeah. put Kiyoshi stuff in, in, in Omashu. Omashu. She was an Earthbender. Yeah, she was. Who an Earthbender. cares? Yeah, like it doesn't need to be like you know. There's so much, so many aspects. There of was that. a temple for her. Just put the girls there too. Just put their the the king's guard is. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Why not? It's like, oh, we, we trained at, I loved that in the live action. They don't really cover that too deeply in the cartoon, but that like we we trained to be, you know we tra- Well, they did mention it in We the- have trained in a tradition under Kyoshi and under the Avatar. Yeah. And like we have maintained like They mentioned and this will be a little a little rearranging of the lore slightly, but when in the Netflix live action they had mentioned when they were going through the journals and stuff like oh kiyoshi is like she started as like on the streets and like worked for like a noble family that was and then then became the avatar she started from hum- very humble beginnings yeah that could just be an omashu yeah and then i mean granted the village then gets moved to you know there's a sect of warriors in omashu but like then you kind of get both and then yeah. you kind of get like and can have his kind of, you know, two wizards of, like, his old friend kind of like, hey, man, it's okay. I was know I was there with, with you as a kid, but, like, a lot of things have changed. And, like, it's real right now, and we need you. And then at the same time, like, he can have, like, a little Avatar State moment during this fight. And I was like, oh, wait a second. And then he can get visited by uh, Kyoshi and be like, hi, we've been trying to contact you about your car insurance. Yeah. Would you please Cause have 15 minutes? We yeah. need to talk. Ah, I don't want this. I'm not thrilled by this. Yeah. I want to be Aang. and maybe like Boomy's kind of like really jazzed about him being the Avatar because also he's like you know my family's tied to Kyoshi like she's really important to my family like yeah maybe that's the whole thing that yeah that's that's really good just to, just to squeeze things down because he's seem- like oh like there's aspects of her like I feel like you know being close to you is like makes me closer to her which is like really cool and, and that triggers the, like, like I don't, he's like i'm not, I'm not that's no, not, not who not, i am I'm, I'm, I'm ang you're my friend boomy i just want to i ang i'm ang just ang your friend yeah i'm not yeah. her i don't know who she was i'm me i'm i may be the avatar but i'm still me it's like oh okay dude like i yeah no harm. it's fine I yeah i so and okay so that's like the so that's the big that's the beginning of act two right they yeah. kind of get to Omashu. They kind of get that, you know, get a cool little fight, a little training. Um, we need hey, to go, the, the southern, go, go the north, north, young man. North, go north. north. Um, and then... Then what happens next? I have to be honest. Sure. I think that's one thing the movie does well is that it includes Aang getting kidnapped and Zuko saving him. I think it's important. I I'm also thinking that's the end of Act 2. I think so, too. I think that's when they mo- they leave for the Northern Water Tribe, and I think maybe we have, um, I think we see an Ang that's kind of on edge because like now he's being asked by past selves. He's he's on edge because like he the the rubber is hitting the road of him being the Avatar mm-hmm. and having to do Avatar stuff, and he doesn't necessarily want to. And I think maybe there's 
you know, there's a little bit of a moment where, and I, I, as much as it frustrates me as an audience member and as a human, sometimes like when Katara gets jealous of Aang and his abilities, I think it's kind of important. And I think maybe we have, we have aspects of that because Katara is still trying to figure out how to water bend Mm -hmm. and that maybe their, their rivalry kind of reaches ahead on their way to Northern water tribe. And, um, Aang's like, I'm just going to go check out the Northern. I know nobody's there, but I'm just, I just got to see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there's, I think maybe there's a conversation between him and Katara and Katara's like, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Running away. Like you always do. Like kind of driving yeah, that. She's a wizard a and he's bit. a sorcerer. Uh huh. Yeah. And I think, and she can get the water bending scroll, uh, in Omashu. Yeah. They've got treasure troves and stuff. They Absolutely. Have, they, have, they have a library. Absolutely. Yeah. So the if question we learn is, from lot from the Netflix is that it, like Omashu is a great, melting pot for for, for plot for all, yeah for all plot this happened in a so, big city yeah um so i think so azuka can kind of like be chasing him they can run into commander zhao the race t- to get the avatar then starts mm-hmm. um and i think i think that it's just between zuko and zhao it's a race to get to the north if they're heading north they can kind of like be tracking him a little bit like oh, yeah, i think he's heading north where would be well what's you know if he's because everyone knows about this stuff because the avatar is you know a, been a public figure for gener thousands of years at this point yeah so like i would it's like oh he's if he's an airbender well we know how the, he has to learn water bending next that's how the cycle works you yeah. do it in there's a, there is an order he has to learn water bending there's only one place he can go. Well, we yeah. kind of did. We, but we also kind of established. We kind of also established that the spirit realm was in danger. Yes. So like that's really and, more and the also reason. well, and they also know. Where oh, he, I see what you're saying. The bad sorry, guys. Sorry, are, sorry, the, sorry, the, sorry, the bad guys are sussing out where he needs yes, to go. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I was I was somewhere else for a sec. Um, I should have been doodling or pacing. So I think, unfortunately, I mean, I, Jet not in this movie. The whole that no that whole part no. Katara freeing the Earthbenders, the, cool. I the don't, bear spirit I, doesn't matter. I because we can just learn about, we can learn about that through um, uh, Sochi, after yeah. Sochi, and being like you know kind of lo- lo- is Secret Tunnel season one or season two? I don't remember. I think it's season two. I don't know, but again, not in this. Um, yeah, I, and. I think the most like the most important next thing, I mean maybe we can stop at a village or something to like see like see some like ground level like we saw Omashu hey here's the stuff maybe we see some ground level you know of them you know being um a, a town village being uh, oppressed by fire yeah. nation and maybe it's the, maybe it's just the beginning of the whole little earthbender thing like maybe they find an earthbender to things they're just getting supplies and like firebenders see them and they try to attack sure and they and they help out the town and it you know it's awkward they're trying you see the team kind of working together but also at the same time that they're not gelling yet because katara is still kind of frustrated with stuff and yeah. Aang's still kind of like you know um but and i think that schism that could be at that village moment that sure. schism start breaks as they're getting closer and they're getting at the end towards the end of act two and Aang goes off to the northern air temple Sure. Where he gets yoinked by Zhao. Yeah. And then, so with, then we with, have that sequence. Yep. With, you know, and with, yeah, with, with Zuko breaking in. And then I think Katara and Aang, and Katara and, uh, and Sokka try to attempt a rescue. Sure. Just as they are coming out. Yes. And they all see that it's Zuko. Yeah. And they, the, the kids want to kill him or stop him, right? And Aang's like, guys, we got to go. We got to go. We, you know what we could be friends yeah like, i think i pr- thank you for helping me i'm sensing i feel like this is yeah i, I don't feel, feel like, like this is about i feel like this is about something else yeah but i yeah but thanks I, thanks okay bye yeah just to and then we which leads us into act three everyone arrives at the northern water temple or northern water tribe yeah and then we get a little you know we oh we the fire nation is coming ticking clock has started yes we we are the team's aware of like the spirits are in danger we have been told that the but what's going on here oh the moon and the something other spirits taken for blah 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 yeah and we get the lower down get the conclusion of a lot of our character storylines in that i think uh we can have katara training 
have her kind of like realization of that we talked about earlier emotions again and her, grief fi- and her yeah, figuring PTSD, out yeah. that in order for her to bend she's got to kind of heal herself and figure that out mm-hmm. and she makes some progress in that direction i think Sokka in becoming tight with the princess and being his her quote-unquote like guard gets to a point where um oh that's it since the, the spirits are in danger and we find out she's connected to him Sokka's yeah. like I'll, I'll guard i will guard her also, she's you know she's super hot. We kind of like each other. Great. Yeah. We'll guard. We'll. Yeah. I'll guard. I'll guard. Uh, but I, I think guard I her. think she softens yeah. him a little bit, and there he comes to a realization that it's just like I don't really know what I'm doing. Like I don't really know what I'm doing. Hmm? I just I mean, I've been kind of forced to like every all, all of these roles that I have taken have been just kind of thrown in my lap, and I'm just doing the best I can. I don't really know the I'm best. I'm 16. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know how the best to protect you. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, but I'm here. And and I think her message to him is that, and that's enough. It's a, like, you're enough, Sokka. You're enough. Yeah. That's an, and, and that is enough of a story for his mm-hmm. level of character, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Um, And then Aang kind of gets the conclusion that we, you know, think he's going to. But I think there's maybe a flavor of, um. I think it, in his training and getting ready for this fight against the, the, there is a large amount of the because like this water the, what, what's the name of the water uh like master i don't remember i think it was like piku or something i read that in the wikipedia i mean he's a pretty impactful teacher on ang i feel mm-hmm. like if i'm recalling from the cartoon it's a struggle correctly. in the cartoon they're like yeah he like takes he, the like, ang really... immediately but doesn't katara and it's a whole big thing yeah and, yeah um but i think he teaches him the lesson it's just like hey like you're gonna have to learn to like learn a lot of different things in order to be the avatar but like and the avatar has been a lot of different people but the avatar has never been you how are you going to do this Mm -hmm. because i think maybe ang gets caught up in like maybe some of katara's research and stuff and like how all the other avatar like how did how did these other avatars bend water yeah and maybe that's how that will Mm -hmm. help and he's just like that's that's not it it's yeah. how does Aang how does do, do this? Yeah. And maybe that's kind of the thing. And it's like, you need to, in order to embrace like the full avatar, you have to embrace the fullness of who you are. Not everyone you've been before. Mm-hmm. They're there's there to help. They are there to help. They are not you. Mm-hmm. That everyone, everyone thinks that you're, you're just the same person, but you're your own person who has also been other people. Mm-hmm. Have you ever watched Doctor Who? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, Zuko can break in again and they can, he can have this little angle and, um, you know, they can, he can abscond with, uh, maybe he can, maybe he can kind of kidnap Aang a little bit, but maybe not take him too far. Because I think, I think that Zuko should fight Zhao here. Oh, yeah. They should fight. I mean, maybe it's, Zuko, like, he saved him before, and I was like, it, oh, and, that's and good. a hand was extended in friendship. Yes. And they left him, they left him be. And now, like, maybe uh, after Zhao, you know, kills one of the fish, uh, disrupting the balance. We put the Zhao, the Zhao stuff in Act Two, where we were kind of like, we don't really know what goes here. I'm like, that's where Zuko, that's where yeah, we the, the battle, Zuko yeah, the stuff. race, yeah. Yeah. Um, but now that Zhao takes out one of the fish, throwing the balance of the fight in the fire and, and you know we play with the music and it's like it's a great like we oh my god they're winning oh no they're not oh yeah. no the, the tide is turning everything's going wrong the girl like now that we have had, had lore dump since the beginning of act two of what's going on and we now know she's tied to them directly we've known well now i guess the beginning of act three but we've had more information about these fish the whole movie Oh, that then she's like, maybe her lore dump is that like, you know, I've been tied to these fish and I'm princess and there's so much expectation of like who I'm supposed to be. And I don't really know what I'm doing. And Sokka's like, oh, yeah, I don't really know either. Mm-hmm. And they, they both have that realization with mm-hmm. each other. That's good. OK. And so uh, while Aang is, I guess, maybe talking in the Avatar state, trying to figure out what to do with the fish or whatever, trying to heal or figure out something, uh, Katara could have a fight with Zuko. Zuko can win, get rid of, get Aang out of there. But then um gets caught by Zhao. Oh, okay. And then it's like what am I what do we do? Oh, this kid did save me. 
They had and to I, fight. And I already saved him again. Dang it. I got it. For my, Time I, for my to honor. kill Asif Manvi. Let's get him. And I, th- I think I think Zuko does beat him. And the, like in the cartoon, and because in his Agni Kai in episode three. Yes. Right? Yeah. He yeah. he does give him mercy. He beats him and he's like, and walks away. Yeah. Because maybe Uncle Iroh is still like ringing his head a little bit. Yes. And he is saved by Katara. Yes. And Katara could knock him into the ocean and then he can drown. He, drown, he drowns in the cartoon. Oh, Zhao drowns. Zhao drowns. Zuko. Yeah, no, Zuko shows him mercy and yeah. then um, Katara can come up on the fight saying that he is fighting to not, not protect. He's protecting Aang. Although he does have alter- alternative motives. Like he wants to take him back for his honor, but like he did protect him. Yeah. And then she can be like, yeah, uh, Zhao's going to like, you know, stab him in the back. And Katara just like, you know, fuck Katara finally like does the cool move. She's been waiting the yes. entire time. This is her moment. What a whip or something other, you know, something else cool. Yeah. Knocks him into the ocean. And he can just like, yeah, you killed one of the moon spirits. Yeah, you're, you're not getting out of that water, bud. Yeah. Lady, uh, you know, the, the nice princess sacrifices her life for the moonfish. Balance is restored. The tide turns, the tide turns back to the Northern Water Temple. And he's like, okay, I'm going to embrace myself. Here we go. <laughs> he's starting to believe. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Avatar. Avatar. What we got to do next? We got to figure out. We got to bend Earth. We got to go to the Earth Nation. I have to be honest with you. Yeah? Do you know what I realized about, like, about, like, we've been watching so much Avatar. We really in have. so many different versions. I was just like. I never want to talk about Avatar ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm, I, I was like, you need ah, a break? Sh- ah, shoot. And we do not get one. No, we don't. We do not get one. No, we don't. We don't get one. Nope. Huh. Is this what they mean? Is this what the Mar- what they're talking about with Marvel fatigue? Possibly. Superhero fatigue? I got, I got, little Avatar Airb- fatigue? I got Airbender fatigue, baby. <laughs> fatigue bender. <laughs> I think I think that's a solid film. It's not the cartoon. No. It can't no. be. The live action Netflix show is doing a fantastic job right now. And we're, we're, and we're only three episodes in. It's crushing it. Yeah. I think that is probably a, one of the better pitches for a possible movie version of book one. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's got to it. streamline a lot of stuff, and you got to have to rearrange a little bit of stuff. And it's not all precious. It's not all gold. Like, that's the thing about sometimes that I'm like, I have to be honest. In the in the Netflix live action, when, like, Jets, all of Jets, like, second secondary characters showed sure. up, I went, they don't need to be here. Oh, not really. That, they didn't, we didn't need this. I was like, I appreciate that Jets here and maybe give him, like, one of his buddies, but, like, I didn't need... I, I think they were like, isn't it fun how they're all here? I'm like, they were in one episode. It's mm-hmm. not, and they don't return. Well, maybe we don't know. They're going to be in Amasha for the next episode. We haven't watched it. No, no, no. I'm saying in the cartoon. In the cartoon, yeah. They are, this is one shot. This is not mm-hmm. pertinent. This mm-hmm. is Dicer level oh, Dicer. characters. <laughs> in the arms <laughs> of the ages. <laughs> um, yeah, like the the inventor and his son at the northern uh, northern air temple. Like, yeah, it's cool that they they got uh, Abed to be. Uh, yeah, it's great. But like, but you know, if we we're, didn't sli- we're slimming stuff down. You know, that's not that's not gonna make a movie. No, but I think, yeah, I don't know. I think, but I also think there's stream. They're, it's not gonna make the movie. Absolutely not. Yeah. I think it makes the show fine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they're like smooshing, it smooshing, all together. yeah, yeah. But I, for me, it was more that like I, I just we were like, well, they didn't include this, they didn't include this. I was like, it's not. They it's can't the, include everything, guys. They can't do it all. They can't do it all. And let's not pretend that it's all great. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you gotta, you know, sometimes you, sometimes you gotta kill your darlings a little bit in order to, and like, that's okay. Maintain. Mm-hmm. I would rather I would rather them not have every aspect of the show involved and have. And the one thing that the Netflix live action is doing a good job of maintain a strong theme Mm -hmm. and have a firm understanding of what your characters are doing. Yes. That's all I need. Yep. That's the most important part. That's the most important Mm -hmm. part. Take if you take your main characters seriously and take their journey seriously, you can kind of do whatever you want. 
that's the most important thing when you reimagine things for different versions of the same story. Yeah. Books, comic books, cartoons. And that's where this movie goes cartoons, wrong. They had movies, no clue what shows. any of these characters wanted or were yeah. doing. No clue. It's just like, hey, you remember the show, guys? It's stuff from the show. Here we go. Yeah. It wasn't, they didn't take this as a, a they didn't take it as their own thing. It was yeah. like, we're going to make the movie, the cartoon and the movie. Here's all the stuff from the cartoon, right? We're great. Give us money. Like, you didn't take the, no, you just tried yeah. to, you really just tried to just, you just tried to steal the money from us. Well, I think we fixed it. I think <laughs> we, did, we nailed it. We did the it. best we could. Yeah, we did the best we could. We did the best we could. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, next week, uh, Adam and I are going to be putting our heads together and fixing uh, 1980, 90, no, 90, 4, 6? I don't, sure. I don't, dude. I, it was we'll a 90, be fixing, I don't remember. Uh, the 90s uh, watery Mad Max ripoff, Waterworld. <sighs> I've only seen that movie once. I uh, dude, I I've yeah, and I don't I, remember it at all. Uh remember drinking pee, tattoo on the back, him uh Mount Everest. That's the only yeah. thing I remember. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh. it's going to be fun. Uh, but if you uh, thanks for watching thanks for listening thanks for listening um, if you're catching this wherever you catch your podcast if you wouldn't mind leaving us five stars maybe writing us a fun review they really make me smile I read them all the time and they apparently help with the algorithm that's what they say but who's to know also if you're catching this on YouTube an algorithm we fundamentally understand you know <laughs> like subscribe hit that bell do that awesome. YouTube that you do so well we love making this show and we love that you love listening to listening to it and we'll see you guys next week as we end every one of these episodes heartbreak feels good in a place like this <laughs> it's the <laughs> it's the <laughs> it's the seven people <laughs> doing a, a decent a, a pretty cool kata but then like a floating boulder Slowly moving from left screen to right screen that you clearly don't see or hear coming. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.